Right, let's give it some guns now. First gear. God, it's so take some water, you know. Whoa! <laughs> wow, like that 10 grand absolutely takes off. Welcome back to the channel, guys, and welcome back to a couple of very, very special motorcycles. I feel incredibly privileged today to be out riding the original OW02 Yamaha R7. This bike came out in 1999, only 500 were ever produced globally, and I think only something like 47 ever came to the UK. So this bike is incredibly rare. A quick check on how many are left.com, and I think there's only five of these registered of, as roadworthy as in last year. So this bike's incredibly rare. It cost 22 grand when it was new. In the, today's money, you're talking something between 40 and 60,000 pounds for one of these. So I'm going to be riding this today, and a massive, massive thank you to B-Moto for sorting this out. So uh, more details on that later. But we're not just riding the original OW02, we're also going to be riding the 60th anniversary edition of the new R7. So I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison between these machines. So grab yourself a cup of tea, make yourself comfortable, and chop C, roll the intro. So here are the bikes. We've also got Bruce Dunn with us, famous MCN road tester, the Speedmaster. <laughs> here he is. And more importantly, sorry Bruce, here are the bikes. So we've got the brand new R1. This is the anniversary edition. Um, so this is based a lot on the MT-07 engine, you know, the same chassis, that platform. So I've actually never ridden an R7 at all. So it's the first time I'm going to ride the original, uh, sorry, the new R7. And then we've got this absolutely gorgeous beast. I mean, have you ever seen a better looking motorcycle? Probably outside of the MotoGP paddock, you know. It, not, I'm not talking the current monstrosities with their wings and all sorts of things hanging off of them, but this thing is just gorgeous from an era an era gone when things were a lot more beautiful on track and uh, we're going to set off i'm going to we're going to do a swap i'm going to start on the new r7 and then we're going to stop halfway through the ride and we're going to swap over and have a go on the old classic r7s really excited first time for me cannot wait but first of all let's start on the new one so as i said at the beginning this is my first time riding the new r7 and you know what, I mean I've ridden the MT-07 a fair few times, but stepping onto this, the first thing you notice is what an aggressive riding position, it's full on sports bike riding position. Yamaha haven't made any concessions, you know, because this is a road machine, they've gone full sports bike on this bike, and I think that's to be applauded really. I think you know the fact that they've gone full on aggressive sports bike is to be applauded if not a little bit brave so this bike has the mt07 cp2 motor in it as i say exactly the same as, as what's in the mt07 seven six almost 700 cc parallel twin obviously cross plane crank all of that good stuff and you know, it gives it a load of grunt a load of torque it's only about 78 horsepower so we're not talking massive power figures but it's a lightweight bike obviously 188 kilos fully fueled because this is quite a racy position it actually does encourage you to sort of start to push on a little bit with this this is <laughs> this is a lot of fun actually really lightweight changes direction you know not masses of power but it's got that mid-range it's got grunt you know and that makes it really a really good road bike i'd rather have a a grunty machine than a you know a really peaky machine which i think is going to be completely opposite to what that, R, that new old r7 is going to be like that's going to be all peaky i expect because it's a race bike with this riding position it is it is very risky i mean I, i'm 6'2 20 stone you know this is a this is a i fit on this bike though i wouldn't say this feels too small for me this doesn't really feel any smaller than my gsx r thousand 
and there's plenty of room to move back and forward in the seat you know you're not locked into this it's quite spacious quite roomy even but you do have a lot of weight on your wrists more so than my k8 gsxr i would say so it is it is an aggressive bike and i think probably make a decent little track tool as well someone like brands hatch let's see how she handles the hill climb and i say it's got no electronics it's, it's no quick shift to blip or anything like that on this at all I love that. I love the fact that it's so raw like that. I mean, I like electronics on modern bikes, but not on sub 100 horsepower machines, right? Oh, loads of room to move, but even though I'm six foot two, this bike feels so roomy. You can ride this like a proper, real sports bike. Ah, oh, this is really, really good, actually. Loads of lean angle loads of feel yeah this this is this is brilliant and you've got to really use and work that power to make the most out of it a few some higher speed corners it takes a little bit of bar pressure to change direction i think it might have quite a a long wheelbase this i say it's not too aggressive on the geometry you know, it's very stable, you know, I think they've made it quite easy to ride, they've not made it too flighty. Right, let's pull over here. We're going to swap, I want to trust that, I can't wait, I can't wait no longer. Right, you ready to swap there, mate? Do he doesn't want to get off it, he doesn't want to get off it. Just look at it though, just look at this bike. It's absolutely amazing, and this is basically 100% stock, apart from this one's got a full titanium Akropovich system which is also pretty tight on that exhaust there but yeah these are incredibly special motorcycles as you can see you've got the twin twin fillers for endurance racing but anyway we'll do a full walk around of this in a minute with the decent camera i'm just too excited i want to jump on oh jumping on it oh it's actually yeah it feels a bit different to the uh, the other r7 the pegs are definitely higher the bars are even more forward. Oh, let's fire out, let's fire out. I'm going to be careful on this ride because... Listen to that. This was one of the first fuel-injected motorcycles Yamaha ever made. I mean, this, this came out in 1999. <laughs> it's quite lively on the, on the clutch there. Bloody hell. This came out in 1999, and I think there'd only been a couple of other bikes which were fuel injected at the time. And, uh, and the R1 was still carbed at this point when this came out. Now, the R1 didn't go carbed for a few years' time. So you now this is an early fuel injected bike. I'd be interested to see what it's like. Gosh, it's really lively at the bottom when you rim it. Quite flat at the bottom end. Oh, it sounds beautiful. <laughs> oh yeah, this, this feels really cramped. I, I mean, I've never ridden a bike with the bar so low at the front. The tail feels high, the pegs are high. I do feel too big for this motorcycle. This isn't made for six foot two 20 stone elephants. But what a thing. Let's have a little bit of a play around this faster corner here. <laughs> yeah, this, this feels so rigid. The chassis feels so rigid on this. I might do 110 knot though, that's, that's in kilometres an hour. <laughs> I thought I was doing 110 then. The geometry on this is supposed to be almost identical to the YZR500 Grand Prix bike at the time. The frame, you know, this is a really short bike, yeah, it's, it's pretty agile. But the frame is like double thickness, so it's completely stiff. Obviously, it comes with Olin suspension, you know, which would have been changed out for racing. But it's, it's got a very firm feel. You know, you hit a bump and it <laughs> vibrates. But what a thing. It actually feels quite wide. The tank feels wide. because I, I think it's got something like a 22-litre tank. It's got a massive tank for endurance racing. So I'm expecting it to feel really thin between your legs. But because of that massive tank, it actually feels quite wide. Yeah, those brakes. Absolutely awful. Absolutely terrible, that front brake. 
So in stock form, these make 106 horsepower. So similar to the new R1, you know, it, it was, wasn't even groundbreaking back in 1999. You know, it was very modest power delivery. What they offered was two race kits for this. One which I think included an exhaust and the option to bring the second set of injectors online, which pushed the power to about 130 horsepower, 135 horsepower. And then for an additional £10,000 on the already £22,000 price tag, you could get the full race kit version, which took it to about 160 horsepower. The fairing on these cost, if you can find one, £8,500 for, to, for a replacement fairing. Apparently they're all sort of handmade, so no, no, no two are the same. <laughs> so, yeah, we don't want to be sliding off this today. Let's just put it that way. B-Moto have got me covered though. I'm insured with B-Moto. They've sorted me out. They've covered me to ride this bike. But I'm sure they won't appreciate me sliding it down the road. Whoa, the power is all right up the top. Oh, it sounds wonderful. It's one of those bikes where completely opposite to the new R7. The, you know, it's, it's very, you know, it's not much pull at the bottom at all. I will open up a bit more than that. You get to sort of eight or nine, and then it starts to f absolutely fly. I think this bike with the full this this bike is I think the standard, but it has that full titanium system. So I don't think it's the 130. Maybe it's 130 horsepower. I don't know. It, it felt like it was going pretty well then, but it's a bit unknown as to what state of tune this bike has. It could just be 106 horsepower, but with the full Akropovich. So probably maybe about 110 or something. We'll see, we'll give it a bit more guns in a minute. And we'll see if we can diagnose them, see if the arse dyno <laughs> could give us some power figures. Right, let's give it some guns now. First gear. Right, so take some wind it up. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa, like that 10 grand absolutely takes off. The 10,000 revs absolutely takes off and sounds incredible, but it's so flat below like nine grand. You can tell this is just an absolute race engine. But my God, you get to 10,000, you've got a couple of thousand revs there where it's absolutely flying. That feels like more than 109 horsepower. Whether it's because it's so flat at the bottom that you, when you're getting that 109, it's like, a, it's like a slap around the face of 109 horsepower. So maybe, <laughs> cheers mate. Maybe that's why it feels more, because it's so flat until that point, but my goodness. Where this bike excels, I think will be the handling without a question. Oh, it's locked to the road. Those brakes are terrible. Oh, it's, it's so firm. So much feedback from the tarmac. It's, it's such an awkward position for a larger rider. I can't move around this very well compared to the new R7. But you can just tell everything is firm, you know. It's, it's a really rigid bike, this. Really rigid. But the sound and the howl <laughs> when you open this up. Oh, man, that, that's addictive. That's intoxicating. Being such an early fuel-injected bike, <laughs> you can hear that, can't you? It's really on off. We'd excuse it that. And it's so, you've got to like slip the clutch up to like 15 miles an hour as well. Because that first gear is so tall. Yeah, it's, it's not the most easy bike to ride at low speed. The gear change is really crisp. Feels like a lovely gearbox. Real quick change, obviously no quick shift and blipper. Way before those came in, but it's a really nice, crisp, precise gear change. I mean, the whole bike just feels sort of there, you know, ready to go, stiff. The only thing which is bad on the bike is those brakes. Just, just what you want, innit? A £55,000 motorcycle with bad brakes. 
So Bruce, you've been along for this little ride. Yes. I think you said you rode one of these when they first came out, didn't you? Mate, I rode this one. I uncrated this actual bike. This actual bike? A pal of mine <laughs> bought you. it, yeah. He was a farmer in the Fens, right? Do you want the story? Yeah, He was yeah. a farmer in the yeah. Fens, uh, the lowest point in England, below sea level, yeah. rich in oxygen. He had a rush of blood, and it was an <laughs> advert in Motorcycle News. He bought it from some Bosnians in Bosnia, and they brought it over in a van. Really? So it wasn't I, one of the UK allocation then? It was bought out. Well, no, he, he tried to order one. Oh, couldn't, he couldn't get one. Steve Lindsdall from Flitic said, sorry, mate, there's your deposit back. Really? We can't do it. So yeah. there was an apology, and he was... Yeah, there was him in the middle of a peat field, hankering up, and he saw it, and he, he got it, and they came. And then, and the other thing is about that, this bike was, I had to pretend I'd gone halves on it with him right. because his wife was going to kick off. Is. So I had to be super excited, which I was anyway, about uncrating it with him when we got it home. So anyway, 25 years later, I'm here again with it. Yeah. But we did, because he was like a pal of the magazine and the paper and all that at the time, he let us ride it for tests and right, that. Yeah. So, and I must say, getting on it today is like being born again. Yeah, beautiful, R isn't it? Really, yeah. Beautiful. So it's, it hasn't got road manners. It's a little yeah. bit harsh and it's, yeah. a, it's really like lively on the it's throttle. Really, the fuel injection, you can tell it's quite an early system. Yeah. Time, especially in town, it's like on yeah. or off. But yeah. it's, it's a breath of fresh air. Like I said yeah. to you earlier, it's, it's devoid of all that Euro 4 and 5 nonsense, yeah. you know? And even when I was following you, you can smell un unburnt hydrocarbons. No <laughs> catalyzer. Winner. Clicks into first nicely, and it's really difficult to sort of get rolling without <laughs> really having to slip it and get loads of revs involved. Once you're rolling, it's fine. Well, at a decent speed, you go too slow and you'll fall into that whole fuel ejection trap. <laughs> That's what riding classic bikes is like. But we're not interested in shoddy fuel ejection and those things about this bike. We want to know, this, is, this machine is all about the handling and the power delivery and the passion, you know, this, this machine is so engaging to ride and I feel so privilege to be allowed to ride this so so massive thanks to bmoto for letting me on this bike go show them some love guys they're a channel sponsor i'll put links to them below get a quote from them get a quote go visit the link get a quote and support these sorts of videos because <laughs> i want to ride more cool stuff like this going for the overtake watch the poles there's some power there somewhere Absolutely sings. Yeah, Botti Dino, I, I reckon it's about 115, something like that. But it's the way it's delivered because it all comes in at once. It feels like it's there's more and it just sounds so glorious. When you're up to speed is when that riding position starts to work, you know, and you've got the sort of weight lifted off of the bars. The seat is pretty big, it's very, very wide, the seat, and you can move back a sort of similar amount to what you can on the new R7. It actually feels sort of similar from a, a sort of seating amount of room, much wider in the tank than the new R7. And the new R7 is, is quite a crouch, but <laughs> nothing like this. This feels like two inches lower than the, uh, the new R7, the bars. Oh, down on the box there. Oh, start, only starts to sing about 8,000 revs. Only starts to sing. Dead, 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 dead. There it is. Move your leg over, hang out the sea a little bit. A little dab on those poor brakes. Yeah, it is absolutely loves the road. This it's so planted. The poise, the poise, that's the word for it. The poise of the bike. It's beautiful. And 
know, despite the suspension being 23 years old, you know, I can feel the road. This does not feel like a 23 year old motorcycle. <laughs> Without thrashing its tits off, which I don't want to do. It is so flat. I mean, you give it extra throttle, it makes no difference. The last half turn of throttle does nothing. It's got like an initial pickup, and then giving it more gas doesn't do anything. I like this little twisty bit here. Oh, what a thing this is. <laughs> oh, this is incredible. Incredible, incredible, incredible. What a motorcycle. Wow. So here it is, the legendary R7. I think uh, I wouldn't be exaggerating to say one of the best looking motorcycles, production motorcycles ever produced. I mean, it's, I love the small little round headlights, sort of reminiscent of the R1, of course, but slightly smaller, you know, real wide fairing, really, really wide for you know, maximum aerodynamics but yeah it's a it's an incredible incredible looking bike up front we've got the owner suspension those brakes which is probably the only thing which really is, is showing its age on this bike that delta box frame as i say this has some additional strengthening and apparently the actual geometry of this is very reminiscent of the yzr 500 as well it's a very reminiscent of the gp bikes for endurance racing, you've got the option to fit a secondary filler. I think it's a 22 litre tank here. And of course, with the endurance team, they have the twin fast fuel outlets, don't they? So they plug them both in, pump a shitload of fuel in very, very quickly. And you can see this is all, you know, hand, hand welded here specifically for this model. And you can also see the little breather for the fuel tank here, all, all hand, hand welded aluminium fuel tank. The rear of the bike, we've got, you can see the tail light is almost sort of like an afterthought on the back of the machine. And then nestled in there, we've got the, the rear Olin shock. All the fairings attached with the little D-ring race fasteners. So, you know, e even from the factory, this thing came fitted with sort of quick release fairings as well. There is that dashboard, old school, analog, absolutely beautiful to watch this thing bouncing off the red line. Even though it is fuel injection, it does actually have a manual choke. Quite interesting. Adjustable rear sets also a standard, just straight away for the racetrack. The rear seat, obviously no, no pillion uh, provisions on this machine. You've got a racing tail cow and actually a surprisingly wide seat actually on this as well. But there we go, there she is, the beautiful R7. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching the video. I hope it's been of interest for those of you who are too young to remember, you know, the original R7, you know, just to make you aware that these things are out there. They do exist with only five registered on the road. Your chance of actually seeing one is really quite slim, but it's an incredible machine, you know, so special. And I can't say it again, a massive thanks to Bmoto for letting me ride it. So send it go visit them get yourself a quote you may be surprised let them quote you happy maybe not that could be someone else's tagline but go check them out i've got my own links you know if you get a, if you get a quote through my links it also helps me out as well i don't get any monetary kickback but um, they know that people are coming from my video so uh, there we go thanks for watching as always guys and i'll see you on the next one